really, really great to be here. I, you have the power to change the world. I'm not saying that to be cliche. You really have the power to change the world. Deep inside of you, every single one of you has the most powerful device known to man. And that's an idea. So a single idea from the human mind, it can start a groundswell. It could be a flashpoint for a movement. And it can actually rewrite our future. But an idea is powerless if it stays inside of you. If you never pull that idea out for others to contend with, it will die with you. Now, maybe some of you guys have tried to convey your idea, and it wasn't adopted. It was rejected. And some other mediocre or average idea was adopted. And the only difference between those two is in the way it was communicated. Because if you communicate an idea in a way that resonates, change will happen, and you can change the world. And changing the world is hard. It, it won't happen with just one person with one single idea. That idea has got to spread, or it won't be effective. So it has to come out of you and out into the open for people to see. And the way that ideas are conveyed the most effectively is through story. You know, for thousands of years, illiterate generations would pass on their values and their culture from generation to generation, and they would stay intact. So there's something kind of magical about a story structure that makes it so that when it's assembled, it can be ingested and then recalled by the person who's receiving it. So basically, a story, you get a physical reaction. Your heart can race, your eyes can dilate. You could talk about, oh, yeah, I got a chill down my spine, or I could feel it in the pit of my stomach. We actually physically react when someone's telling us a story. So even though the stage is the same, a story can be told, but once a presentation's told, it completely flatlines. And I wanted to figure out why. Why is it that we physically are, sit with rapt attention during a story, but it just dies? Hey, if presentations had a shape, what would that shape be? And, and how do the greatest communicators use that shape, or do they use a shape? So I'll never forget, it was a Saturday morning. After all this study, it was a couple years of study, I drew a shape. And I was like, oh my gosh, if this shape is real, I should be able to take two completely different presentations and overlay it, and it should be true. So I took the obvious. I took Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech, and I took Steve Jobs' 2007 iPhone launch speech. I overlaid it over it, and it worked. I sat in my office just astounded. I actually cried a little um, because it was like, I've been given this gift, and here it is. This is the shape of a great presentation. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? Let's <laughs> cry. So I want to walk you through it because it's actually pretty astounding. There is a beginning, a middle, and an end, and I want to walk you through it because the greatest communicators of all time, I went through speeches, everything. Actually, I can overlay the shape. Even the Gettysburg Address um, follows the shape. So the beginning of any presentation, you need to establish what is. You know, here's the status quo, here's what's going on. And then you need to compare that to what could be. Now, you need to make that gap as big as possible because there's the, the commonplace of the status quo, and you need to contrast that with the loftiness of your idea. So it's like, you know, here's the past, here's the present, but look at our future. Here's a problem, but look at that problem removed. Here's a roadblock. Let's annihilate the roadblocks. You need to really amplify that gap. This would be like the inciting incident in a movie. It's when suddenly the audience has to contend with what you just put out there, and they have to say, wow, do I want to agree with this and align with it or not? And then the rest of your presentation should support that. So the middle goes back and forth. It traverses between what is and what could be, what is and what could be. The last turning point is a call to action, which every presentation should have. But at the very end, you need to describe the world as a new bliss. This is utopia with my idea adopted. This is the way the world is going to look when we join together and we solve this big problem. So you need to use that as your ending in a very poetic and a dramatic way. Here's Mr. Jobs, completely has changed the world. Changed the world of personal computing. He's changed the music industry. Now he's on his way to change the device, the mobile device industry. So he's definitely changed the world. And this is the shape of his iPhone launch 2007 when he launched his iPhone. It's a 90-minute talk. You can see he starts with what is traverses back and forth and ends with what could be. So I want to zoom in on this. The white line is him speaking. He's talking. Uh, the next color line you'll see popped up there. That's when he cuts to video. So he's adding some variety and he cuts to demo. So it's not just him talking the whole time. And these lines are um, representative there. And then towards the end you'll see a blue line which will be the guest speaker. So this is where it gets kind of interesting. Every tick mark here is when he made them laugh. And every tick mark here is when he made them clap. They are so involved physically. They are physically reacting to what he is saying, which is actually fantastic, because then you know you have the audience. 
like in your hand. So he kicks off what is, what could be. With this as a day I have been looking forward to for two and a half years. So he's launching a product that he's known about already for a couple years. So this is not a new product to him. But look at this, he does this other thing. He marvels. He marvels at his own product. He marvels himself more than the audience laughs or claps. So he's like, isn't it awesome? Isn't this beautiful? And he's modeling for the audience what he wants them to feel. So he is actually doing a job of compelling them to feel a certain way. So he kicks off with what could be, with every once in a while, a revolutionary product comes along that changes everything. So he starts to kick in and talk about his new product. Now at the beginning of it, he actually keeps the phone off. You'll see that the line is pretty white up until this point. So he goes off between, here's this new phone, and here's the sucky competitors, and here's this new phone, and here's the sucky competitors. And then, right about here, he has a star moment, and that's something we'll always remember. What he does, he turns the phone on. The audience sees scrolling for the first time, and you can hear the oxygen sucked out of the room. They gasped. You can actually hear it. So he creates a moment that they'll always remember. So if we move along this model, you can see the blue where the external speakers are going, and then over towards the bottom right, the line breaks. That's because his clicker broke. So what does he do? He wants to keep this heightened sense of excitement. He tells a personal story right there where the technology didn't work. So here's the master communicator, and he turns to story to keep the audience involved. So the top right, he ends with the new bliss. He, he leaves them with a promise that Apple will continue to build revolutionary new products. And he says, there's an old Wayne Gretzky quote that I love. I skate to where the puck is going to be, not to where it's been. We've always tried to do that at Apple and from the very, very beginning, and we always will. So he ends with the new bliss. The future isn't a place that we're going to go. It's a place that you get to create. I want to thank you. Bless you. God bless you.